Now let's talk about conduction. Now conduction is usually the slowest way in which heat can move from one place to another. It's nothing like as efficient as radiation or convection. However, it does have the advantage that it can work in opaque solids, like through a brick wall. Radiation will only work if something's transparent, so light can get from one side to another. Con convection will only work if there's a fluid, but if you've got a solid and it's opaque, like a brick wall, conduction is the only game in town, so it's really important. How does it actually work at a microscopic level? Well, conduction actually works in liquids and gases as well. Let's say we had a, I don't know, a liquid or a gas, and we've got some atoms on this side which are moving very slowly because it's cold, and over here we have some ones moving really fast because they're hot. And conduction is just going to happen because some of these fast-moving atoms will fly over here and bang into atoms over here. Meanwhile, some slow ones will gently meander over that side. So as time goes on, heat goes from the hot area into the cold area, just because of atoms moving backwards and forwards. In a solid, it's a little more complicated. Let's say we've got some slow atoms on this side. And they're all connected by chemical bonds. And over here we have some fast-moving atoms. I've got to draw the arrows. But the atoms on this side are jiggling around like crazy. And what's going to happen here? Well, the ones that are moving, like this one, will yank on, pull on the slow-moving ones at this side via the chemical bonds. And so as time goes on, the fast-moving atoms on this side will pull the slow ones around and ca cause them to speed up, thus spreading heat. So the general rule for conduction is heat transfers from hot areas to cold areas. Now, the fundamental equation for it is a bit tricky because it involves vector calculus. However, it is one of the most common and powerful and useful equations in all of science. No matter what you end up studying, you will see a lot of this equation. Let me show you. The heat flow, which is a vector, it has a direction, is equal to minus a constant, which is called the conductivity, and this rather strange thing like an upside-down triangle, T. And I'll talk you through all these things in turn. This is called the grad, or del, and basically it's telling you it's the gradient of the temperature. It's telling you how rapidly and in what direction the temperature is changing. This is the conductivity. Something with a high conductivity like copper means heat will move fast. Something with a low conductivity like polystyrene, it'll move very slowly. The minus sign tells us that heat flows from hot to cold. If it wasn't there, it'd be flowing from cold to hot, which would be a very strange world. And this is telling us the heat flux, so it's the number of watts per square meter of heat moving. Now let's focus on this, the, the grad. We're not going to use it very much in this course for heat, but you will see it when we get to electricity and magnetism, because exactly the same equation will apply to electric potential. Also, exactly the same equation applies to things like diffusion. In fact, this is often called the diffusion equation. Now, what we need to understand is that temperature is a vector, no, not a vector, a scalar field. What does that mean? It means that every point in space has a temperature. These temperatures are scalars, they're just numbers. So, for example, we might have a block of metal, and it might be really hot in this corner and really cold in that corner. So that would be a scalar field, because you could write down an equation and would tell you for every given position, which might be x and y, what the temperature would be. Now, for example, let's say that we had an equation, which was that the, te that the temperature as a function of x and y 
we'll just do it in 2D for the moment to make it easier to plot, is equal to 10 plus x plus y squared. And that's an example of how you might write down one of these scalar fields. What it means is if you know the x and y coordinates, you can use this equation to work out the temperature. Now this means that at x and y equals 0, temperature is going to be 10. As x increases, the temperature will go up steadily. As y goes positive or negative, because it's squared, the temperature will go up more rapidly. So we can plot a graph of this. We know that the temperature is going to go up this way. And we also know it's going to go up both sideways directions. So it's probably going to look really hot, something like this. And it's going to be cold down here in the middle. Now let me show you this one. So here using Mathematica is actually a graph of the temperature, which would be 10 down here, 10 here at 0, 0. As you go up in x, temperature goes up this way on a straight line as a parabola up in y. We can also do this, show this as a surface plot. So here is a surface plot of the same thing. So in this direction x is increasing, y increases that direction. And you can see that there's got a valley of low temperatures, a sloping valley, and it rises to both sides. OK, so that's what a scalar field looks like, just an equation telling you what the value of a scalar, in this case temperature, is at every point. What is the strange thing here? The grad, of the, or del, of the scalar field? Well, it's just a vector that points from high to low. So if it's high temperature here, low temperature there, then the grad of the temperature actually points from low to high, minus the grad of the temperature, which is what we have here, will point from high to low. And the bigger the range of temperatures, the larger the value of this, like if that's 11 degrees and that's 10.5, that means there's not very much of a gradient. Whereas if that's a million degrees and that's zero, then there's a very large gradient. Also, if they're very close together, like it goes from a million degrees to zero degrees over one micrometer, that's a colossal temperature gradient. Whereas if it goes from a million degrees to uh, zero degrees over a billion light years, that's a pretty small gradient. How do you work it out? Well, the equation for this, the equation for the grad of a temperature, involves partial differentiation, which is this funny d here. So what you do is you work out how rapidly the temperature varies as a function of x, and you add together how rapidly it varies as a function of y, and that's the y component, and similarly for the z direction if we're in 3D. So we take our equation and we do what are called partial differentiation. That's what these funny, not quite like normal calculus things are. So in our particular case, if we had temperature equals 10 plus x plus x plus y squared, we can calculate delta t by delta x, delta t by delta x, what that means is we differentiate this, treating x as a variable and treating everything else as a constant. So differentiate 10, the constant is nothing. Likewise, differentiating y squared gives us nothing because we're assuming everything other than x is a constant. So the only thing that's varying is x and uh, dt by dx is just going to be 1. Similarly, we can look at dt by dy. We're now going to differentiate this assuming that y is the only thing that's varying and that 10 and x don't vary. So differentiating 10 gives us 0, differentiating x gives us 0, and that will give us 2y. And dt by dz, nothing there depends on z, it's just 0. 
So putting these all together, we can find that for this particular case, it's going to be 1 times a unit vector in the x direction, plus 2y times a unit vector in the y direction, and nothing in the z direction. So we can calculate this at various points. So for example, if we're at the location x equals 1, y equals 1, we can plug that into here, and we'll find that's going to be x plus 2 times 1, y. And that will give us a vector for this at the location 1, 1. Now we can plot this as a whole bunch of arrows. So once again, I've done this in Mathematica. What I'm actually plotting here is not um, the grad of the temperature field, but minus it, which is what we actually want for heat flow. And if you plot that on top of the contour plot, you can see the arrows always point downhill, and they're longest where the steep is largest and small where the slope is low. So that is the diffusion equation which is the equation for working out heat flow due to conduction, and also the equation used in many other cases.